Well, good morning, guys. Big A. Here we are, Monday morning, last day of July. Hope things are going awesome for you. Coming to you live from the Station Camp Greenway. I bet you couldn't have guessed that. Every month we do a theme in the Mastermind Group. This month, I'm going to be very honest with you. It's on something that is really, really tough for me. And that's not what it is. It's how to deal with it. It's on ambition. Every month we discuss a topic and we have a book that goes along with it. Seth Bluche has written a book called Ambition, Leading with Gratitude. And I want to tell you why it's so hard for me. It's because I've got a great amount of ambition, way more than I probably should have. Chris Freeman is a great friend of mine. It's in my accountability group. And he picked me up one morning to go to the gym. And I got in the car and I'd been up for a couple hours. I'd been reading studying. I was preparing. I got in, man, and I didn't shut up. I was talking 90 miles an hour. And he said, man, I would hate to be married to you. <laughs> I said, well, I'd hate to be married to you too. And he said, no, what I'm talking about is, is man, you're amped up. And he said, you and Robin have been married 35 or 37 years, ever what it was at the time. And he said, I bet you wear her hind end out. And I started laughing. And I said, yes, yeah, she tells me that all the time. Well, the truth is, is I've got probably more ambition than I should have. And I've wrestled with it. I've dealt with this my entire career. Sometimes I get over ambitious and uh, the results don't coincide with my ambition and then maybe I'm disappointed or I'm down. Some of you guys need more ambition and that's why we're studying it uh, each and every week in the mastermind group throughout. I read three chapters yesterday. Seth did an amazing job. He owned a cellular company did really, really well, sold out, started other companies, took them public, sold them, did really well. He was very ambitious, and he talks about it in his book. And what he said was, is, and I've discovered this as well, is that oftentimes your ambition, if it's just tied to a financial goal, it doesn't really scratch the itch like you thought it would. It's like good, like you get it and it's good, and I don't ever want to take, take away from the fact that we want to make money. I love to make money. There's nothing wrong with money. We got to keep it in its proper perspective. We want to own the money. We don't want the money to own us. I get tickled sometimes when I hear people say, well, I'm doing this. It's not about the money. Well, I've never had one person to say though, I'm going to do this service for you or provide this product for free. <laughs> Next time you hear somebody say, well, I don't do this for the money, say, well, good, because you're going to do it for me for free. You'll see them recant on that pretty quick. I think people think it's more noble if they say, you know, I don't do it uh, for the money. But quit saying that. <laughs> Part of it is about the money. Don't make money bad. There's nothing wrong with money. I love to have some money. I can go on a trip and buy groceries and pay the electric bill. There's nothing wrong with making money, right? Just don't let it own you. Well, Robin and I, a few years ago, went through the Panama Canal. And when we got into the canal, I should have studied uh, a little bit more when I was in school. I didn't understand that the water level difference was 27 feet from one side to the other. And you have to go through three different locks when you get there. Well, when we pulled the cruise ship in, they hook up what's called a mule to the front, to the center, and to the rear. And there's a cable that goes to each side of the cruise ship and it pulls it really taut. And they hook one to the other side and it pulls it and it keeps it in the center of the canal. Well, if they didn't do that, there's only a few feet variance that there is for the cruise ship that large and it would hit the side and damage the ship. And it causes a great amount of tension on each side. Of course, you know me, I was very inquisitive. So I went up and said, how much do those things cost? They said they're $10 million a piece. There's three on each side of the cruise ship. And it pulls it very taut. Well, I started thinking about our lives like that. I want to encourage you today to embrace the tension. See, the tension is what keeps us safe. The tension is something in our lives that creates a thought within us. Are we doing the right thing? And I often say now to coaching clients, embrace the tension. The good news is, is that you're probably on the right path if you're holding on to the tension. If there's no tension in your life, there's probably something going uh, array. There's probably something in your life that's maybe messed up because you're not paying attention. So the good news is it's probably helping you. The bad news is that tension never leaves you. There's a sense of contentment 
the Bible teaches about. I'm a Christian, and in the Bible it teaches us to learn to be content. But don't confuse that with complacency. I love to go forward. I love to grow. I want to continue doing that, but I want to learn to enjoy where I'm presently at. You can do that. It takes a great amount of work. It's not something that's one and done. It's not something that you get and you're good to go. It's something that each and every day we've got to make a conscious and concerted effort at staying on that path of learning to be content in our present situation. So I'm just going to tell you the truth. It's a, it's a wrestle for me each and every day in order to keep my ambition in check so that I'm content. And some of you guys need more ambition. Some of you are lazy. <laughs> some of you need to get off the couch and go for it. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of effort and energy that it takes to be ambitious. And leaders are ambitious people, and you need to be very ambitious but learn to be content. So we'll go on this journey together. Right today, I don't have all the answers for you. I wish I did. I wish I had figured them out a long time ago, but I'm studying. I'm praying. I give it to God each and every day to learn to continue to be ambitious. But at the same time, I want to learn to be content. I want to enjoy my life. I know you guys do too. I want you to put some comments below in this feed that says, you know, hey, I struggle with contentment. I struggle with maybe not being ambitious enough. I struggle in one of these two areas. And we'll learn from each other. Right? We'll help each other. A lot of people read these feeds and they go, man, that's where I'm at. That's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, read Seth's book. Go online and get it. It's called Ambition, Leading with Gratitude. And I want to encourage you guys uh, to get that book and read it along with us. We're going to be reading it for the whole month of August. And hopefully it will help you understand how you too can become more ambitious or you can learn to be more content in your ambitiousness okay hey i'm big a i gotta get out of here and get to work leave some comments below and say man this has been a constant strain for me or i've got it figured out and the way i've got it figured out is this and we'll all learn together as we go on this way i'm big a coming to you live from the station camp greenway have a great day we'll see you